So today we're going to jump into the whole purpose of even starting with logarithms and that is solving exponentials using logarithms. First thing we got to talk about is a couple of special logarithms, one we've already mentioned a little bit before. The common logarithm or log base 10 of x is written as the log of x. In other words, if there's no base, it's an implied 10. So as we did in a previous problem, the log of 1000 is 3 because what power of 10, because that's that implied number, is 1000. 1000 is the third power of 10, so 3 is the answer. The other logarithm used is called the natural logarithm, and it's based on something known as e. E is a constant. It's a number of 2.718. It's called the natural base. So if I have a natural logarithm, that's a logarithm with a base e of x. But it's never really written like this. It's always written as ln, or we know it as the natural log of x. So if I have the natural log of e to the fifth, we can say that's 5. Why is that? because what I really have is I have that exponent which is a 5 and then the natural log of e but I know this is the same as 5 times the log base e of e and what power of e is e? Well it's the first power so that's 5 times 1. So we'll use these terms to get through our problems today. Now we can use our calculator to do a lot of this all we have to do is pop that thing. And really the only problem with calculators is that they give us approximation. So we're going to round these to the hundredth. And notice this asks me to take the log of 43. Well, I can do that because I have a log button right on my calculator. Notice there's no base associated with it. So I can say the log of 43, hit enter, and get a value out of 1.63. not a problem. Just like I can take the log of some decimal, like log of 8.57, and end up with 0.93. And if you think about it, these make sense because it says what power of 10 is 43? Well it's definitely over 1 and less than 2. What power of 10 is 8. Well, it's not quite 1 because what power of 10 is 10? That's 1. Natural log of 30, which means this is basically the log base e of 3, and we know e is about, oh, 3-ish, 2.7. So it's probably somewhere between 2 and 4 is, should be the answer of this. And if we look at our calculator, here's our natural log button, and we hit the natural log of 30, and see what comes out at yeah, 3.4. Now the problem is we don't have a log base 7 button on our calculator. We can probably get to it in a certain mode but in like scientific calculators you're never really going to see a button for this. All right? And you may have to use some of those in a science class and you may get this actual term. So how do we deal with that? Well we deal with that by using something called a change of base. What the change of base says is if I have the log of a certain base of a number, I can split that up into the log of some new base of that number over the log of that new base of the original base. So notice, the log base A of Y, which is this guy, over the log base A of X. So if I wanted to use my calculator to approximate the log base 7 of 80, I'd want to use bases that are available on my calculator. So I'm going to use the log base 10. And I'll write log base 10 out once for you at least. So this is the log base 10 of 80 over the log base 10 of 7. Notice the 10 
acts as the A in this. And the 80 is the original number. The X is the original base. Or the 7 is the original base. So now I can just pop that into my calculator. The only thing you're going to have to be wary of is make sure the whole numerator is in parentheses. So I'm going to go start parentheses. I'll hit the log of 80. And I'll have to close the parentheses twice. Divide that by open parentheses. The log of 7. Close that twice. Get an answer. And I end up with about 2.25. And in the next example, we do that very similarly. However, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to just change the new log base to the natural log. So I'll say the natural log of 182.45 over the natural log of 4. Doesn't make a difference. You can use any new log base. I could use log base 10 and I'll get the same answer. Again, go over to your calculator. use the natural log of 182.45 close them off divided by the natural log of 4 enter 3.76 let's say and be done. So that's great. We have a way to approximate, but again, that calculator only gets us approximate values and most of the time they're going to ask for exact values. So now we're faced with the problem of how do I solve for an unknown exponent? Well, we've got some tools now that allow us to move the exponent into a different part of the problem and those tools are logarithms. Since this is an equation, I can do whatever I want to both sides of that equation to keep it balanced. I can add 3 to both sides, I can multiply by 7 to both sides, I can square root both sides. Whatever function I choose to use on one side of the equation, I can use on the other side of the equation and keep the equality true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of our new concepts of logarithms. I'm going to say, well what if I took the log base 10 of both sides. I can bring that exponent to a product out in front and have x log base 4 or log base 10 of 4 is equal to log base 10 of 12. And now the log of 4 is just a number. It's like the number, you know, 0.7. So I divide both sides by the log of 4 and I end up with x equals the log of 12 over the log of 4. This does not simplify. If this was 12 over 4, yes, but this doesn't go to a subtraction or anything. This is the exact value. Now notice what I could do is I could say, well, how else could I do this problem? I could slide this base down because I can go from exponential to logarithms and get x equals the log base 4 of 12. And as we just found with our change of base, we could change our base to a log base 10 and say this is the log of 12 over the log of 4. Notice, same answer, two different ways to do it. For simple terms, this is going to be a really easy way to go about it and then just use change of base. All right? But this is the concept we're going to use most often. So I want to find the exact value using either common or natural logarithms. Similar problem to what we just did, except in our numerator, you'll, or not numerator, but our exponent, you'll notice I have a product of two terms. Not a big deal. If I take the natural log of both sides, like so, I can use our property that says 
take that power into a product out in front. So I have 2x equals, oops, sorry, times the natural log of 5 is equal to natural log of 27. I can divide by 2 times the natural log of 5, which gives me an isolated x. So I have x equals the natural log of 27. I'm going to clean this bottom up a little bit. Notice 2 out in front I can bring up into a power. So this goes to the natural log of 5 squared or the natural log of 27 over the natural log of 5. Ah, I lied. 25. Now it gets a little more complicated because you'll notice in this case we have a sum or difference of two terms on top in our exponent, but the concept's still going to be the same as far as solution goes. I'm going to use either common or natural logarithms, take the common or natural logarithm on both sides. I'm a fan of the natural log most of the times. But in this case, I want to use a common logarithm because I notice I have a power of 10 in 10. So the log of 6 to the 3x minus 1 is equal to the log of 10. In this case right here, what power of 10 is 10? Well, that's 1. And on the left side, I can again take that and bring it out in front. So that quantity of 3x minus 1 is equal to the log of 6. Now remember, the log of 6, it's not a variable, that's a number. So I can take and distribute that to each of these two terms. So I have 3x log 6 minus log 6 equals 1. If we want to get this by itself, remember this is like 3 log 6 is like a number. This is a constant. Bring the constants over, then divide by the coefficients. So I'm going to add log 6 to both sides. That's equal to 3x log 6. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3 log 6. Notice this is going to give me x equals 1 plus log 6 over 3 log 6. The book may or may not clean this up. If it did clean this up, we know that 1 is equal to as we found out earlier, the log of 10, we know that log 6 is log 6, and we know that this 3 could go up here. So this would be the log of 2, 6, woof, 2, 16, because that's 6 cubed. 10 and 6 will go to a 60. So I could clean it up as such, but on a test or a quiz, I'd accept that. The book or a multiple choice test that you get maybe on an SAT may clean things up a little bit. So now in this case, I have a base of E. So if I have a choice between a common or a natural log on this, I'm going to use natural logs because I know I have a power of E within E. Therefore, I use a natural log to both sides. I can bring that exponent to a power, which is that power out in front. So I get a product. Natural log of E is natural log of 11. Notice the natural log of E, what power of E is E? That's 1. So I have 4 
x times 1 equals the natural log of 11, all I need to do is divide by 4. So x equals the natural log of 11 over 4. That's not 11 fourths, that's the natural log of 11 over 4. So in this case, I've got multiple terms on the left side of the equation. Again, I want to isolate my base term in this case, or my exponential term. Isolate it. So bring this 6 over. Get 38 is equal to 2e to the 5x. I want to divide by the 2 because I'm isolating this base term, or exponential term. 18 divided by 2 is 19, or 38 divided by 2 is 19, e to the 5x. Take the natural log of both sides since I have a base of e. So the natural log of e to the 5x is equal to natural log of 19. Bring my 5x to a product. We know the value of the natural log of e is just 1, so I have 5x equals the natural log of 19, therefore x equals the natural log of 19 over 5. This one's going to be the most challenging. Notice I have exponents on both sides, so isolating an exponential term is on a singular side is going to be pretty much impossible. So in this case, it doesn't really matter whether I use common or natural logarithms since I don't have a power of 10 or a power of e on either of the cases. So I'm going to take and use the natural log. And I have 5 to the 3x minus 1, which is going to go to a product. And the natural log of 7 to the 4x, which will also go to a product. So if I have 3x minus 1 times the natural log of 5, equals 4x natural log of 7. Notice I have x's on both sides of the equation. I'm going to need to get all my x's to one side, but before I do that, I'll distribute 3x ln 5 minus ln 5 is equal to 4x ln 7. Again, just like with normal equations, I try to get all my variable terms to one side. So 4x is a variable term, 3x is a variable term. I'll bring this 3x ln 5 over. Therefore, I have ln, negative ln 5 is equal to 4x natural log of 7 minus 3x natural log of 5. Now the problem is, these aren't like terms. I don't get to combine them. However, I notice that there is a common term of an x in both cases, and I need to get x by itself anyway, so I'm going to factor that out, giving me 4 times the natural log of 7 minus 3 times the natural log of 5 is equal to negative natural log of 5. This whole term in the parentheses acts like a singular number, so this is like the number 12x, if you will. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this number out to both sides. And we know anything over itself is just 1. So therefore, I have x equals negative ln 5 over 4 natural log of 7 minus 3 natural log of 5 and that's the exact value. So we got a lot done today. Make sure you do your connect ed and fill out your survey. Talk to you tomorrow.